Just chilling right now. Um, very inspired. Just got done working out. You know, doing some sets of push-ups, some sets of crunches. And when I when I was getting my health together, getting my body together, you know, trying to get my abs, trying to get my arms right, you know, to have that warrior body to prepare for war in these end times. And, you know, just to aspire to be like the Lord, you know, because the Lord was a very, you know, in fit, muscular, you know, very warrior appearance like man. Even some of the kings before us, King David, one of the greatest warriors of all time, you know, um, all of the kings, actually, you know, um, his um, generals, his his mighty men that he had with him, you know, were able to. Um, you know, kill 3,000 men with one swing of it. You know, that's spiritual power and stuff like that. But Moses being able to climb up mountains and down mountains and stuff like that. See, these were very fit men. Noah able to um, build, the, you know, the Noah's Ark. You know, he had to be a very fit, very strong, warrior, powerful man. You know, um, Judah going to war and stuff with King, with King David. On King David's side, you know, we used to be very very warlike man instead of you know modern day we got the man getting all skinny you know wearing skinny jeans which you know i have too because i'm a young and i'm a part of this generation you know you got the man overweight fat don't want to work out no more you know becoming um homosexuals and feminine and everything like that but back in the day it used to be okay they tried to uh, take our mas masculinity away from us back in the day we used to be soldiers we used to be warriors we used to be strong and fit you would see an israelite man and he had muscles packs we would look like professional boxers you know with girdles of gold around our wrists around our um our belly you know with a sword you know um with a crown on our head and stuff like that with our robes with the border of blue the fringes that's how israelite man used to look so i just want to you know i've been inspired to get my body together to work out you know to prepare for the end days because i know the lord will protect us if the lord ordains that but why not help the lord why not be in fit why not be able to do some of the work you know so it's not all on the lord's shoulders you know so you know i just my message is get fit get right be a warrior get back to how we used to be in every single way aspire to be like the lord in every single way and the Lord was very in fit, very strong man. I know some of the elders, it might be a little bit too late, but they can take their time, you know, and get in fit and learn different moves. There's nothing wrong with learning combat, learning boxing, taking an MMA class, you know, taking your time, learning how to defend yourself, exercising, working, becoming strong. So with that, we're going to get some scriptures and show you that these men used to go to war and they used to be warriors, you know. Um, let's start off with Exodus. We're going to go to Exodus uh, 15, chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war, and the Lord in Yahweh is his name. So the Lord was a man of war. In order for him to be a man of the war, that means that he was a warrior. In order for him to be a warrior, that means he was fit. He was fit for war. You know, and the father, the father is a man of war. They're, they're fit for war. They're going to come back very strong, muscular, you know, very tall, tall, tall kings, you know, rulers. And the world is going to be very, very afraid. Um, Exodus chapter 17, verse 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. I bring that one out because that's one of my favorite. We gonna have to go to war with Amalek. We gonna get our hands on Amalek too. The Lord gonna do them dirty. He gonna wipe them out. But Israel gonna get they. We gonna get our hands. The Lord gonna give us that joy. He gonna he gonna give us that joy to get our hands on some of Amalek. And the Lord, that's one of my favorite ones because it showed that the top tribe of um of the Edomites, which is Amalek, the oldest brother. The Lord said you would have war war with them for generation to generation. That's why when they got to our land, they started our land, you don't see nothing but war and war and war going on with Israel and Iran. Because the Lord said he will always have war though, but eventually the Lord will wipe them out and clear them out. But the point is we gotta be war ready. We gotta be warriors for the Lord, you know. Fit. We gotta be fit to be kings, fit to be to get those crowns. Um, let's jump over to Numbers chapter 1, verse 3. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel die 
and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So numbers is, it starts to go with all the 12 different tribes and getting the sons ready for war and stuff like that. And the top sons are ready for war. But I brought that verse out just to show you that everybody that was 20 years old and older were had to go to war. It was a draft. It was a draft. They was getting ready to go to war. They had to get war ready. They had to get their war uh, weapons ready. They had to be fit. They had to work out. They had to test different combat moves. You know, they didn't just say, oh, everybody 20 and older, come get in this line and this group and get ready to go to war tomorrow. No, they was training. They was they was preparing. This was an advance before war that they were getting ready. They were preparing. They were training, doing different moves, learning different combat moves because they were getting ready to go to war. We're at the last days where we're going to get ready and there's going to be World War III Armageddon over the whole entire earth. You got to start getting ready just like they were getting ready. Start getting fit. Start learning combat moves. Start training. Start mapping things out. The Lord going to deliver you so you ain't got to worry about it. That's very true. But why put it all on the Lord's shoulders? Get ready too. You know, I'm not saying go out and buy a whole bunch of guns, a whole bunch of weapons because that's carnal and that's Esau blessing. But I'm saying as far as your own body, you can get fit. You might not have to shoot. You might have to run. You might have to run for your life. You want to be fit so you can run a good distance to get away from something. Something might fall upon you and you might have to push it off. You want to have push-ups. You want to have muscles. You want to be strong so you can go ahead and push it and get it off. You see what I'm saying? A guy might attack you. You might want to you, you want to be able to defend yourself. You want to be able to put your guard up. You want to be able to shoot a one-two. You want to be able to shoot a jab to defend yourself during this time until the Lord come and deliver us. You see what I'm saying? You have to be war ready because we finna go to war right now. Right now, there's a spiritual war going on, but we finna physically go to war where all hell break loose. That's gonna be Jacob's trouble, and like the Lord said, even the one third is going to be tried like gold through fire. So He's gonna put us through the fire through tribulation, and we have to be strong enough because only the strong will survive, and we see that with nature. So we have to be strong enough in order to survive. Um, let's jump over to Numbers. 26 and 2. Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, from 20 years old and upward, throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. So you had to be 20 years up and older, but you also had to be able to go to war. What made you able, qualified you able to go to war? Being in fit, having good health, being strong, being worthy enough to be on the battlefield to have your brother's back. Because if your brother was going to get killed, he needed to trust on you that you were strong enough to defend his back or worthy enough to stand side by side so he didn't have to take on the depression where y'all could split the pressure. You had to be worried enough. If I was on a battlefield, you know, I would want to be a good warrior if I was fighting against, or fighting um, alongside King David. I want to be able to hold my own so, so that we put more bearing on King David. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if I had a brother and we were, and it was just two of us on this portion of the battlefield getting it in, I would want to be very fruitful towards him that he see, ooh, my brother, he got my back. We rocking. Oh, I'm, I'm with, uh, I'm with Kadar. Kadar Yassar, that's my name. Kadar Yassar. I'm with Kadar Yassar. I know he got my back. I know he's going to get it down. You know what I mean? We ain't dying today. So you want to be in fit. You want to be ready to go to war as, as, I'm work, as I was working out. Start thinking about this. Let's jump to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 44. And then he answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. We would go up and fight according to all the Lord our God commanded us. And when he had girdle on every man his weapon of war, he were ready to go up hill. So they put girdles on. The Lord had a girdle of gold. We got to get our girdles. Get ready. Um, get your weapons of war. A lot of men say, man, that's carnal. That's Esau blessing. That's true. But Esau was blessed with the sword from the beginning. But we still was able to go to war. We still had the sword. We still was able to protect ourselves. I'm not going to tell the man if you got a house full of guns, if you're ready for war, that that's a bad thing. I'm going to say there's a balance to it and doing the righteous. And don't put your whole life and your whole lifeline on weapons of war. Put your whole lifeline and roll your dice on the Lord. And if you got a weapon there just to help, fine, do that. You know, but you don't have to boast and brag about it. Keep everything on the low, too. There's a bias to everything. Let's jump over to Psalms um, chapter 18, verse 34. He teased my hands to war so that a ball still is broken by my arms. 
So the Lord teaches your hands to war. He's going to give us that spiritual power to war, to know how to war, to know what to do. But you want your muscles not to break down when he gives you that knowledge. You want your muscles to be able to hold up, work out. You see what I'm saying? Don't, don't, make, don't make the Lord do all the work. You put up some work too, you know? Um, Exodus, um, no, I'm sorry. Psalms 144, verse.